What's going on? Welcome to Classy Tacos. If it's your first time here, just want to say thanks for stopping by. So today we got a big one. We're going to be putting in the East Coast Gear Supply Complete Third Member um, with 529 gears and an ARB air locker. So the goal is to get this one in today. Uh, then tomorrow morning we're going to film the front. So we'll have two separate videos. We'll do one for the rear, one for the front. Um, and then also probably going to do a different video for the spindles. And then we'll come back and do a video on running the airlines and also uh, running the electrical up to the switches um, in my overhead counter. So I'm going to bring you closer and throw you on the bench so you can kind of see everything that comes with this kit in case you do decide to do this. Um, I will say before we throw you on the bench, no matter what you do, if you do this, just follow the braking procedures. East Coast Gear Supply is pretty strict with them. You want to follow those procedures, okay? So let's get you on the bench. I'll show you what we got going on over here. All right, we made it to the bench. So here's what it look. Here's what the diff looks like on it, going straight down real quick. That's the actual um, ARB locker sitting in here. Um, let's see if I can do this. It's really heavy. If you look inside there, you can kind of see the gears coming back this way here. Uh, this copper line here, that's going to be your airline um, down to this seal housing where the two seals are. All those horror stories that you hear are right here in this seal housing when the seals go bad. So. Well, we're prepared. We're ready. So that's basically the copper line going into, let me flip this over this way. See this right here is the bulkhead fitting right there. This thing is so heavy. So that's what comes basically when you order this third. Comes in a box. The box, you're going to keep your box because you're going to ship back yours back to them. Okay. So just don't throw the box away. And then if you do order the air locker, let me get this out of the way. This is kind of the kit that comes with the air locker. So this is their newer style um, with their newer hoses. This hose is a little bit fatter, I think, than the one that used to, than the one, that little light blue one. So new style for, mine's an eight inch diff. So that's this. And then you get in here, there's your switch that we're not going to use because we're going to use that different one. Um, this is your solenoid that goes into the manifold um, and plugs into your power switch. This is what lets the locker know you turned it on and on. This solenoid right here. And then these little odds and ends here are the fittings for the actual bulkhead where you're going to put the lines on the diff. Um, so what's interesting is that these guys give you two styles. So... This one right here that you're looking at, these parts right here, is a compression fitting. So you have a compression fitting here, which is nice. And you can either choose to use compression, meaning the, the line's going to run through these on each side, and then you're going to screw this in so it can't come off, right? So you have that style, or you have the old school style where you're just going to put this in, and it's kind of like the, the pop in and pop out. See that? push it in, the line will come out, and then it locks it in. So these are pretty interesting because this is their newer style. So it's called like, I think it's called a banjo fitting, but there's a hole right in there. And then you see that hole. So this just kind of sits in here like this, right? Actually, I'll do it right for you. That washer, this guy, washer, it screws into the bulkhead. And then from here, you can choose to do the quick release or the compression, which is, you know, interesting that they give you all of those options. So that's what you get. All right, let's go ahead and just start getting uh, the truck ready. First thing I'm gonna do is just kind of lift, pop the tires off. So let's go get the tires off real quick. All right, so here we are under. We're going to just knock out draining the diff. So pro tip, you always want to remove the fill first, then the drain. Uh, you do the drain, and then you go to take the fill, and you can't uh, remove this for whatever reason. It kind of creates a problem for you. So you want to check this one first. That's what we're going to do. This, by the way, is a 24. Nice. We're going to lose a little which should kind of probably slow down or not lose any. 
Okay. I just threw on, no, I just wanted to throw on some gloves real quick. I will say when you buy gloves, uh, pay attention. Uh, buy the size that fits you. Not like me, I bought extra large without paying attention and I have little girl hands, so it's kind of funny. Well, that looks pretty. Actually, just didn't have it done that long ago, so it actually shouldn't look too bad. Nice. A little bit of metal shavings there. Nothing too bad. So we're just going to let that go. All right, so I just want to show you guys something. While that's, we're just going to let that drain for a second. So when it comes to popping these axles off, uh, you have a couple options here. Well, actually, you only have one option to remove this, but what I want to do is kind of try something new with the brake lines. Um, instead of removing the brake line from here um, and just creating a mess, we're going to remove this bolt, this bolt right here, this one, this one, and this one here. Um, and sometimes you're lucky it'll get you enough flex that you can slide everything out without actually removing the brake lines. So no need to bleed the brakes. So we're gonna try that. It's worked on separate vehicles that I've had. Never done it on the Toyota, but we'll see. This is a hard line, but you have a soft line here. So as long as you can get them to move a little bit, you could get a little bit of flex to where um, you might be able to pop the axles out without having to bleed everything. So we're going to give that a shot. I'm going to start taking those off right now. All right, so I'm just going to put this back here so we don't lose it. Let's screw this one in. Like I said, I don't know if this is going to work because I've never done it on a Tacoma before, but we're going to pop all these off. Um, it's a 12, so it looks like they're all pretty much 12s. Just pop off these uh four nuts right here there's one on the other side here um i want to say those are 14s all right that's pretty much off now i'm gonna knock off let's see can you see it the one right there on the here this might be this might be like a 12 it looks like to me and oh we got lucky i think i got a 12 on the other side of this guy oh yeah also 12 so there we go yeah that's a 12 too guys so i'm gonna pop this off so we have this out of the way leave this down by right here all right let's rock we'll head over to the other side I don't know if you can tell, but I think I might have picked the hottest day uh, to do this. So be careful here with your brake lines. So don't be smashing them up. All right. So right now we're sitting with our axles are sitting in here. The brake lines are still on. I'm just checking to see if we could get any play here. So. Essentially, I mean, this should just pop right off. I'm going to go get a rag because they're probably going to lose a little bit. Let's get the ABS sensor off real quick. So sometimes these ABS sensors can be a little bit of a pain. Now that we have the ABS sensor off, let's see how much room we actually get. All right, so here's what I'm going to try. because We might be able to pull this off uh, without removing the brake line. So what I'm going to end up doing is getting a socket extension in here to kind of hold it up. Cause you see like we got, got a little bit of play here. I feel like that is enough. There we go. I feel like that kind of, I feel like that definitely released. All right, got a little cream cheese container. You know what's up. Catch on the oven. Nice. I think we got enough room right here. Yeah, my stuff is a little crusty. See that? You got the socket just holding it out. Um, it's not putting that much pressure on the line. I mean, it's a metal line. You're not gonna just rip it off there nice and easy, but that way you can kind of get away from bleeding the brake. So up next, we're going to jump under the truck and start getting the drive line and the diff off. All right, fellas, here we are down here. 
I do have one really long, like a two foot zip tie, because we're gonna zip tie this guy up out of the way as soon as we get this one off. I wanna see if I remember correctly, it's a 14. Awesome. There it is. Just zip tie right on the hanger, up and out of the way. All right, it is time. Pop this bad boy off. Now we're gonna figure out if we have enough space on our axle. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. But we gotta get all of these guys off. Uh, they're twelve. Um, and I think they're torqued like pretty light. I think we're somewhere in the realm of like, if I remember correctly, eighteen foot pounds. So you don't go crazy. But what I am gonna do is just to make sure I keep these all right in my spot. So it's like right now it's loose, right? But it's just managing to pull it straight out. It's kind of a pain for me right now. Like it wants to get stuck on the screws. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's heavy. Uh, it is not as heavy as the one with the locker in. And just like that, thirds off, case is open. All right, we're back up on the bench. Um, I scraped off some of the old gasket that was left over on the axle housing. So we're just up here on the bench. I left the stock one next to the new one so you guys can see it. Sorry about the lighting, we're kind of fighting the sun setting, but I wanted to get this done today so that we could do spend the whole day tomorrow on the front because that's a lot of work. So before we get this in there, I did already clean this up with alcohol because it was just like a little oily, but we're going to work on getting our airline fitting in. So what I'm going to do is just kind of lean this one over here. Gentle. This one is, uh, this one's a lot heavier than this one, so. Because obviously, I mean, it should be, but just so you know, it's a lot heavier. So we're so how we kind of how we need to install this, right? Is we're going to get this is the part, this guy with the little hole that screws on to right here, it screws on just like that, right? So how we kind of need to set this up is you take a washer and throw that onto here, then you take. Dude, I want to say this is called a banjo bolt, but if I'm wrong, somebody tell me that it's not a banjo bolt and what it's called. Um, that's where that hole is that has the air goes through. You kind of put that right in here like this. Then you do this guy like this, and then you will screw this guy in right here, okay? Now, before we do that, I'm going to put a tiny little bit of Loctite of blue on the edge of this thread far down as we can and take your time here you don't want to cross thread anything just want to make sure it catches in there nicely there we go see the first time I, I, I tried to put it in it didn't want to go here we go perfect now the whole point of this is so that this can kind of still kind of swivel and move and it gets you to where the, the way that this is going to sit on the diff is like this. So it gives you some room in between kind of where you can actually put this. So I'm going to tighten this just a little bit more. But I'm not going to crank down on it or anything like that. You see, because that looks like it might be close to a 15, 14. Of course, all my 14s are under the truck. So I got one. Oh, I got a little stubby 14. So what, I, what I don't want is anything to get in there. It takes me a couple of days to run these lines. So that's it. That is taped nice and shut. Everything is still operating. Um, now it'll make it a little bit easier when we have to run the lines with this already in here instead of trying to do all this under the truck. Um, I did just notice that I'm pretty close to this one hole right here, but I do think we should be able to pass it just fine. So at this point, we're pretty good with getting some gasket maker on this guy here. And 
<laughs> getting it into the truck. All right, that's good. I like that. So essentially right now, this is ready to uh, get thrown on. What I am going to do is just put a tiny little bit of oil inside some of the gears. Um, and you don't have to do any of this. This is just me. Um, this is just a little bit of lighter weight. And it's just my thing. I like to put a little bit of gear oil in it. So, All right, so I'm going to go set up underneath um, the truck. And that way we can uh, throw this on there. And just so you know, too, let me get you guys off of here real quick. So I got this dolly, right? Old school grandpa dolly. So what I'm going to end up doing is throwing the diff on the dolly, sliding the dolly down there, dropping it in, and that way you guys can watch all that. So you know how I do it is just throw it on here. You don't need to, like, muscle the whole thing down there, okay, because this one is a lot heavier than this one. And by the way, it's so hot. I'm on, like, I sweated through that hat. I'm on the second hat. I actually look like this one dried up, so I'm back to the first hat. I thought this was going to be a three-hat install, but we might, we might be able to pull it off with two. All right, so let's get the diff on the dolly. I'll get the camera set up down there so you guys can watch that. And like I said, I already cleaned up, I already cleaned up the mating surface down there with alcohol, so it's ready to go. It's a lot easier rolling with the dolly. So now what we're gonna try to do is just kind of set this in here uh, nicely. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> this is so much heavier than the other one. All right, I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. Uh, unless I've turned it upside down, I think we're good. So, now that that's in there, what I'm gonna end up doing now is just getting all of these washers in um, and the bolts just like nicely. I'm not going to over tighten, but we're gonna just kind of hand tighten. And we're gonna let that sit for a little bit because I'm gonna come back once the Permatex is a little drier. While that's chilling, we can kind of do everything else and then we come back by later to make sure we get it all torqued down the spec, which is like something ridiculously little. It's like 18 foot pounds or something like that. You can go ahead and knock out the drive shaft. It's sitting right here still. I'm going to attach it to the flange. Of course, why would I leave the wire cutters die? We don't need them again. By the way, this is always really fun trying to, oh my God, I was gonna start talking so much shit, I can't believe that just happened. Okay, I'm not gonna say anything. That never ever happens. is on sliding the axles in now uh, nice and easy you want to uh, pay attention here there is a spot right on the seal here where ABS module slides into so you just want to uh, make sure it's knocked off the, on the other end over there so just make sure we are It is. All right. Well, essentially, this guy's in. Let's hop over to the other side. Here, you can kind of see how much they will kind of flex and move around and stuff, so. 
See that? See how much they'll move and flex and and everything kind of worked out. I'm gonna get this one in first, then I'll move that one back next. And then we'll bend these kind of back down where they need to go. Yeah, well, we are almost done. It is time to uh, fill this bad boy up. So you got a couple options here. Uh, I'm gonna go with exactly what East Coast Gear Supply recommends, and that is this 85-140 gear oil. Um, this has to be changed in 500 miles. So you're only gonna get 500 miles out of this before it does need to get changed. Um, 500 miles is what they're throwing out as their break-in period with you know cool down intervals in there as well so just be prepared for that when you do this you definitely want to follow along with that so what i got is this little pump um i'm just going to shove that in there put this in here and the pump has a little it will allow it to screw onto here but it looks like it ain't gonna happen all right, so I didn't want to bore you with the process of filling this up because it's painful. But once you see it start coming out of here, you're good. Like it's on that level right there. That's how you know you're good. Little pump, you know, works, but it just takes forever. So we're going to lock this up, clean it up, and we're pretty much done. All right, guys, just like that, we're done. Uh, it took about three, three and a half hours. Uh, I did take my time and I stopped to eat and everything. So. You probably knock this out in an hour or two. Everything went in pretty smooth. Everything worked well. Um, I'm gonna pull the truck out here. I'm gonna just kind of leave it in the driveway to, and I want to leave it right here so I can monitor if I have any leaks from the oil. But that's it. We're all gonna wrap up tonight, um, and then tomorrow I'll flip the truck around and we will knock out the front. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just please drop them down below. Let me know what you think too. If there's things I could do better or you want to see something, let me know. I can't really stress enough uh, just to make sure that you follow the East Coast Gear Supply break-in procedures, all right? So we are going to do that. I'm going to do a follow-up video. Like I, have, I took some video of me driving like on the highway with stock, and we're going to see what it's like versus uh, being here. So thanks for watching. You guys stay safe out there. I'm, I'll see you tomorrow morning.